now that I know they read the bios out loud, I'll make it shorter next time. Um, thank you, Panina. And uh, uh, I read last night in DC uh, at the three tenths reading series, Big Locks, of um, by Mark Eugene hosts. And uh, uh, everybody was talking about here. Everybody's like, God, you're going to bring Mark tomorrow night. Like, uh, they're the best crowd you've ever had. They're the best readings you've ever had. Pinot de Watts is the greatest host and curator that's ever existed. So um, <laughs> it's nice to be here. And uh, it's an honor to read with uh, uh, Ben, uh, Marcus, who I, I saw the Q&A with Tobias Carroll um, of Volume 1 uh, a couple of days ago. Um, that was a great Q and A about the book. I read the first story, the dynamite story. I didn't get through the rest, but great story. Uh, Annie, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, it's good to read with the Chinello and uh, oh no, this is where this happens. Ryan Chang and other others. That's it, right? Okay. Uh, you don't really need to know anything uh, other than the book is called 14 Stories. Uh, none of them are yours, but there's only 13 stories, which my editor told me. Uh, the other day, and I'm just going to go with it, I'm just going to call it 14 stories, it all adds up to one story, it's basically a, a novel, uh, and this is the first, because it has a continual voice that works throughout the entire thing, even though there are stories intact, and this is the first kind of address of that narrator to the, the first story in the collection, it's called Insides. In the hospital, in the gown, on the gurney. <clears throat> Strange to me, but I love it here, I like the insides. I'd rather be well, but I love to hear people speak. An old woman in her room wants to speak sputter. I hear garbage bags being opened. I'm on a hospital bed, not a gurney. I hear crinkling sounds, the rush and flock of life's little hospital disasters. Even in my room, I can't believe I get to be in the world, even though it's the usual tales of shit, nervous breakdowns on peyote, cowering in my mind, getting myself back together with it, moving from hotel to hospital to behind the wheel. How about a joke? Joke. A man, let's call him Harry. Harry goes into an interview in old New York City. There's a great big man behind the desk, an outdoorsman, even in his finery and top office. You can tell he's an outdoorsman, among other things, by the occasional artifact placed here or there, the pictures on his desk of his duck hunting dog, by duck hunting dog itself, Buck, lying on the floor. Let's say the interview starts and Harry has terrible gas. Harry's trying to hold it to himself. He's a young guy looking for a first gig in the city. He has some connections and a highfalutin education. He answers the first question fine, but out he comes flatulating. <laughs> Luckily, Harry thinks Buck's nearby. He pins it off on the dog, pretends nothing's happened, looks at Buck briefly, pretends to be polite, pretends he's hardly even noticed he's such a guy, Harry is. Well, you know jokes. Every step of the interview, bar another fart from young nervous Harry. What can you do, the old man barks, followed by a further line of questions. Qualifications? Fart. The old man looks at Harry. Harry looks at Buck. The interview is going great, Harry decides, as the old man thinks it's Buck. Pretty soon, Harry is sure he has it in the bag. He's begged the Buck by Buck's being there in the room. What luck the old man had a dog. Right then, Harry can't hold it anymore. He lets one go. Buck. Buck. The old man shouts, Bucky! Buck! Get the hell away from that guy before he shits all over you. The old man <laughs> uh, I need to have a CAT scan. See, I came to the hospital. No one or me knew what went wrong. Rib pain, lung pain, stomach pain, pain in the guts and groin, groaning pain doubled me over. See, I start to hate the woman in her unseen room. I yell for her to quiet down. She gets sandwiches I hear, which I don't get any. She talks of anus parade nursing home. I miss so many words. I get others wrong. I have a life of taking trips with my little mind, all freaked over from long ago, traveling from the ground out of my head, moving my body around in a cracker jack. I can partly see a sign outside the woman's door. Can't make out the words or pictures. A doctor comes and wears a front plastic coat, gloves, eye gear. He enters her. I pick apart a newspaper in my gown. I find the inside pages with pictures of steak, potatoes, Mr. Clean. Can I move this? Yeah. How do you... Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Who am I now but a weird patient part of all of this world, in a little room with a sign about pain? 
It ranges pain from no pain to one, two, three, mild pain, four, five, six, moderate pain, seven, eight, nine, severe pain, with faces that show increased crucifixion. <laughs> Ten is the worst possible, and from the looks of and the face looks about right for the living. I can take the body's betrayal at first, I think, but I think of Catherine and I'm done for. I told her when she left me over the telephone that I had memorized her feet, I told her. I had them sunk in my mind, I told her. I had lust on all over for them, I told her. She waited on yours truly to prove it. She was always waiting on me to win her or I misunderstood. The first time we were together, I sucked her feet whole. As much as I could get in my mouth. I licked her from crack to crack. I, I sat back on her couch and she stood on the arm of the back of the sofa and lowered herself down to my taste. This was on a terrific street, up above a China person's restaurant in New York City. I always feel like a little guy trying to prove I can. Then I went nuts along her. Mouth everything. A nurse puts the ink into me. Do you know how nervous she makes me? They're going to look inside, look inside of me. They're going to look inside. I prefer not to think about what's inside, other than the heart, the gut, it's the words. You want to look? Hey, don't look. Hey, hey, don't look in there. A stroke person is coming from below, being rolled around. I feel the iodine. It is for the CAT scan, the ink they call it. It's warmer than my blood. It's like whiskey, hot bourbon in my tea, in my lungs and stomach first, without throat, and I feel I've wet myself and am weak. I feel the warm ink reach my toes. Whiskey is a taste I haven't had since the snow coming sideways through Montana, lining up the Black Mountain long ago with a woman who could work the casinos and cook beans for me. I'm a living thing on a hospital in my back. Catherine is from Colorado. I'm from Ohio. Who wins, you figure? Aspen to New York or Ohio to hospital? Well, inside the CAT scan, oh, I see Jesus Christ. I see servants. I see lots of things with my eyes shut. Leftovers from mouthfuls of peyote. I wore a blanket around a bunch of engines for 16 hours plus up in Mendocino. Afterwards, we eat ribs out of styrofoam, store bought fried chickens, brownies, and fago soda. I looked at the ice, the vision new, and the news day sun moving. I still don't see like a person. Now I know you're not just going to die from suffering. That's what peyote is good for. Catherine, I don't know. For the past week, I had broken ribs or lung and bone cancer. I went from doctor to doctor holding my side. Tried a dress shirt around me to sleep at night. The doc said, muscular skeletal, from coughing, those cities hold it will heal. Bastards. Here is a tip. In the new world, doctors will kill you. Maybe it was always so. I had only thoughts of Catherine and feeling the hurt side. I am six foot five, six, seven, and have had pain, a femur in half, and my skull broken a few times, busted arms, some dog bites, cuts and minor burns, distemper, hyper this and that, mentally unhealthy, family history of alcohols, drugs, and whatnot. I think I'm going to stop. <laughs>